what is the typical day for you like? I mean, what are what are you doing when you're in yes, musician thank, mode? Thank you for asking this. I'm, I'm glad I asked. <laughs> right, yeah. Because, uh, and I, I know a lot of people that don't do music don't understand. Oh, so They're like, well, if you're not playing a show, then what are you doing? Yeah. You know? And I'm always like, well, how do you think I got that show? You know? Yeah. Um, how do you think uh, I connected with you? You know, or I yeah. got on the summit, or uh, I got to play a show for Airbnb, or anything like that. You know, like, it's all stuff that, first thing I do when I wake up, is I lay in bed for another hour, probably. And I'm just looking at the emails that I got, yeah. anything I got, like, and I wake up at like 7.30 a.m. So like I have, don't have like too much. Um, and I think about like, all right, what do I gotta get done today? Yeah. And I go to the gym, come home, send emails, um, booking shows, doing whatever, um, kind of connecting uh, with other writers, because I write, mo most days I write. Um, I'll go to the studio, record, um, and then, uh, the, probably the thing that takes the most amount of time is booking your tour. Because you have to, you have to send out like, so, so many emails and have to, it has to be catered to each thing. And like, here, here, here's the person I'm gonna have opening for me in this place. And um, especially, cause I, I still book all my stuff myself. Um, but I am taking a little like touring hiatus after these shows uh, in April. Um, for good reason. You guys will, you guys will know soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah. But um, it's really a lot of meetings. It's a lot of uh, scheming. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of getting ready for those shows and a lot of getting ready for your releases and um, a lot of branding stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm, like I said, like, which you guys will know soon. I'm doing a lot of branding right now and um, meeting with label heads and publishers and stuff like that. And, sure. Um, and it's all on their schedule too, so it's like fitting in all these yeah. things and then trying to make money in between too. Uh, like that, the other day, like I had two meetings, Thursday, I had two meetings, went and played a show in Nashville, then drove through the night, uh, left at 2.30 a.m., drove through the night, played on the Summit Radio, came here, had a meeting, went home at eight, went to bed, woke up, came here. Yeah, that, you, that, is, both, that is both crazy and admirable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. That's, that's the kind of stuff that we, we do all the time, oh, yeah. you know? And that's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Like I actually have this video, uh, this company was doing a documentary on me because they kind of caught wind of what I was doing when I first, when I first moved there. Um, and you can still find it, it's just like on my Facebook page somewhere, Music City Mavericks, I think it was called. And they literally have videos of me running through parking lots because I played a show at the Basement East, which is this huge, like, 700-person venue. Yeah. And then literally running across the street to another venue to host a writer's round that I used to do. They have, like, this video of me running through the parking lot because it was, like, down the street. Yeah. Um, and I was, like, 10 minutes late, you know? And it's, like, stuff like that that no one really knows that you do. Yeah. And, um, yeah, man, it's, like, every day I wake up what do I got to get done today? How am I going to make money today? Yeah. And how am I going to be creative? And that's like literally it. Yeah, there's yeah. so many of these little moves that amount to the, yeah. big, the big thing. Yeah, yeah. so it's, because uh, I know a lot of people think that you're just sitting on your ass all day. Uh -huh. you know what I mean? And then you like roll out of bed, oh, I got a show in like an hour. I right. guess I'll think about getting yeah. ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, should, uh, I should put something else on other than my basketball <laughs> yeah. shorts. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it's not like that at all. It's just, uh, it's a lot of prep. So a lot of behind the scenes stuff that happens that, um, yeah, it's cool though. I Excellent. love it. You've done all this stuff. You've got all these different moves and like evolution under your belt, but what keeps you motivated as a musician to, to keep doing this, to, to avoid the burnout? My song, Brighter Shade of Blue, that it's about to take 4 million plays on Spotify. It went viral in Brazil. And I get messages from people in Brazil like, oh man, like you're, like your song helped me through this, or then um, I always tell this story too about that song. Uh, one of my best friends now, his name is Nathan Winklemiss, and he's based out of Columbus. Mm -hmm. I met him probably when I was 17, recording with my first band um, in Newark, Ohio. He was an intern at a studio out there, and I met him like that one time. And then I was touring through Columbus. We were playing Woodlands Tavern in 2000. 17, February 2017, I remember. I was on tour and uh, he messaged me on Facebook and goes, hey man, I'm, I'm coming to see your show tonight. 
and I was like, okay, like, cool, man. Like, can't wait to see it, you know? And he brought a bunch of friends out, and then I got off stage and I walked to the back, and he was in the green room with two shots of Maker's Mark. And we did the shots, and he goes, hey, dude, I just wanted to, like, let you know that your song about your dad really spoke to me because my dad committed suicide three months ago. And that, that song has just kind of like helped me through some dark times. Um, and him and I are like so close now. Like I, I, I love him, but like that, that kind of stuff, if I could do that for people, uh, as much as like myself, like, it, like I said, like it helps me through that, but if I can help other people through that too, like that, that's worth it to me. You yeah, know? it's so funny because, you know, a lot of the best albums of all time are like breakup albums. Right. <laughs> like, um, and, and so it's so funny, you're like, this is therapeutic for me. This is like me tapping into it. But you never really think, at least like on the surface, that this could be doing something for somebody else right. too. Yeah. So that's awesome to it's get great. that feedback. Like yeah, exactly. in your case, literally get messages and, you know, yeah. conversations. Man, that's like, that's my favorite thing. And um, that even though I was playing on the, on the summit yesterday, Brad goes, man, that song's so relatable, uh -huh. you know, like, that everyone's been through that. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you've all been through it, but like the the little like intricate, like very personalized things make it mine, you know, and I yeah. and I just love that. That somebody can still connect to that. Yeah. Um so it's cool, man. So